please excuse my voice and how I am during this video. I'm having issues with my allergies and sinuses and during the winter seasons I usually have issues with this. I get short of breath at times due to allergies and not being able to breathe as well during the winter months. So I apologize for that but onward and upward with the video. So today's video concerns another video I did a while ago addressing the Alienware Alpha Steam Box and how that it was more of a glorified overpriced PC. Most people didn't agree, well not most, most people agreed and many people didn't agree. More than usual. It wasn't the usual, you know, between 1 to 10% of people disagreeing. So I had a good amount of pushbacks in the comment section. And most of it regarded to me saying that you can make a comparable PC for the same expense. Now the idea behind a Steam Box is that you can pull out all the components in it, unlike a console, and replace them as needed, unlike a console. And that idea goes out the window with the Alienware Alpha because it has a soldered graphics card to the board, a 60M souped up pretty much is what it is. Uh, but each variation and model upgrades a couple things, sometimes you get a bigger hard drive, other times you get more RAM and a better CPU. So the entry level model has has a dual core and it has four gigs of RAM and it has the of course the 860M and uh a hard drive and a controller. It's just a basic model Steam box. If you want to look up the specifics for it, please feel free to. But I stated for $550 you could probably build something better. And by better I mean a more interchangeable system that is more form factor also. In fact, a lot of people pushed back on that comment the most that I made because a lot of people didn't agree with me. Now, I'm going to tell you right now that I can back this up with evidence to show. I've done it two times already. I built my uh, love's computer, Jen, upstairs for less than $500, and I built a friend of mine's computer for less than $300. It's not impossible to do this stuff, but this comes with a heavy tagline and warning. If you guys aren't interested in going on eBay or going on PCPicker.com or sleuthing around for deals on Craigslist and things of that nature, if you're not okay with using secondhand stuff, then you're probably not going to find much, much less brand spanking new. Now having said that, when you purchase a Steam Box, you have to understand that it doesn't come with a monitor, and for the most part, it doesn't come with a lot of extra stuff. Meaning that really, it only comes with a controller and the Steam Box. You have to get a keyboard and mouse separately in, in the event that you do need to mess around with it, which you will, you will need that keyboard and mouse. That's what I've been told. I have not purchased one yet. Um, there may be something in the future with that, depending on the comments, if you guys would like me to look at the Steam Box. However, having all that entailed, um, it does come with a few cool features, like the uh, UI that allows you to access Steam fully with the controller instead of requiring a you know, mouse and keyboard. But there are ways around that. But that's not what this video is about. So, here's the thing, guys. You know, I have a quad-core i5 with a DH55TC motherboard. These are old components. But do they work? And do they blow away lower-tier components? of today's standard? Yes. This i5 quad core, old, very old by technology standard, blows away the new rehashed Panium D that was released by Intel. And it's old and it's it cost roughly the same. I bought that part for less than $100 and the motherboard was less than $100. Which means I got a quad core in my system that's not in, only good for productivity, but also for gaming. So it's not just for playing games anymore, it's also good for productivity. And then I slapped the 750 Ti NVIDIA MSI version in it. Boom. Now I can play most games on high and many games on ultra settings. The Sim 4, Sims 4 on ultra is a breeze up there. I haven't tested a lot of things on it because it's not my computer, but it works great and it plays those games wonderfully up there. So again, that 
card was less than $150 for me. The rest of the components came, again, secondhand from a previous computer build, uh, like an extra hard drive. I put an SSD into it, 120 gig SSD, a terabyte hard drive for storage, and Hyper 212 Evo. The only other components that I needed to buy was a $30 case and uh, 8 gigs of Corsair RAM. And all together, it didn't total over $550. Uh, but if you take each one of those specific components, look for them on various sites, you can buy them new and or used for less than $550. This is the only claim I'm making. If you're a smart shopper, you can find the stuff. Now, in regards to my friend's PC, all my secondhand stuff that I didn't use anymore, all of the stuff that I recycled, I just gave to him for his PC. There's no issues with that because uh, I wasn't going to use it anymore. The parts were a little bit too old for me to use, and I, uh, of course, couldn't mix and match a lot of them also. So, you know, he got a i5, Core i5, and he got a 550 Ti NVIDIA graphics card, and he got a terabyte hard drive, you know, fans, a case, and... Altogether, it costs him less than $300 to have a pretty decent gaming machine. Now, I say decent, it's an entry-level budget PC, but again, with the money that you save building your own, um, you could invest in a higher-grade graphics card that you could later on interchange out. That's the only issue that I have with any Steam box, is the interchangeability. Without that, it really just means it's a PC once again. So, um, if, if you don't have that interchangeability, it might as well be a console. Because you're going to end up having to change it eventually when the newer games come out. And it won't power the newer games. Or they'll only run on medium settings. And then eventually they'll only run on low settings. So, that's the point I'm trying to make. Um, I may have misworded a few things, but then again, I'm not feeling like a million bucks right now. But I feel like I should still do these videos. Now again, it, it, it comes with the tagline. If you guys aren't willing to take a chance, and it's not much of a chance, because when you go on eBay, uh, you have money back guarantee. So if someone sends you a part that doesn't work, and you buy, I mean, you could send it back. Just contact the person. Hey, it doesn't work. Can I get my money back? Yeah, sure. Send it back. Boom. Done. No issues. Probably have it back within a week. It's not that big of a deal. And then, of course, you could get on eBay and build a bare-bones kit. Now, a lot of people will sit here and cry, well, it's not form factor. I want a form factor. And my reply to that is, why? Really? 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 Unless you have, like, the tiniest apartment in the world, I really don't think a mini form factor PC is the best thing in the world. Let me explain why. There are two reasons why form factor PCs are not the best. One, they're noisy a lot of the time. When the fans are going at high speed because you're playing a hardcore taxing game on the graphics card and you're producing a lot of heat, your fans start to kick on and go a little bit higher, 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 and you start to hear them. That's annoying. Nobody wants that. And second of all, it has issues di dissipating the heat, which means you will experience a lot more thermal throttling, which means your CPU will not go as fast as it should to keep itself from overheating so it doesn't have to shut off what you're doing. All bad things. But if you must insist on a form factor PC for whatever reason, there are plenty of them out there. The Gigabyte Bricks allows for a full graphics card to be put in it, albeit somewhat smaller version, but you can still fit a full-fledged graphics card into it. There are plenty of other form factor PCs like the Revolt from iBuyPower, um, CyberPower also has its own, as well as other PC manufacturers like the Zotec Portable PC. 
There's a PC that's literally the size of like a tiny remote control. Full-fledged PC, runs Windows 7 and everything. It has a large power adapter, but you know, there's a little bit of trade-off here and there. Uh, it's passively cooled. It's a really cool PC. Really cool with what people can do. So, but again, with that comes trade-off. You're probably not going to be gaming at hardcore high settings. You're probably not going to be able to run many games on that because you're not going to be able to cool it adequately. So in the end, ladies and gentlemen, the arguments are there for the Alienware Alpha Steam Box. And if you have purchased one yourself, I would love to hear about it in the comment section below and your experiences with it. Um, I have heard many good things and bad things, and so I'm still on the fence about it. Personally, I don't, I, I can't see how I would require one because I have, <clears throat> excuse me, I have my consoles hooked up to my main TV and then I have my PlayStation 2 over my, my computer along with a recording Xbox 360 for any recordable content that I want from that. And I just don't have monitors out my butt just all over my house. So it's a trade-off, you know, with what I want hooked up at what time. And I don't want to be unhooking and rehooking things up left and right. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, if you feel compelled to argue with me and tell me that I'm wrong and the Steam Box is just awesome, let me know why and back it up with some really good reasons. Uh, I have thrown it out there that you could make a PC for much, much cheaper. You could probably find pre-built PCs on Craigslist, and if you knew your way around a PC a little bit, you could probably determine if it was a good deal or not. And that's just how I feel. Um, you can always spend your money on pre-built PCs from higher companies like Dell and Alienware, or you can build it yourself and invest more money in the graphics card uh, versus having a form factor PC. Now, there's always trade-offs, ladies and gentlemen, but then again, there's always the Gigabyte Bricks and Revolt and other form factor things that don't sacrifice that uh, standalone graphics card. So leave your comments in the section below. And uh, I've been your host, Proto Mario, and I'm signing out. I just, I wanted to get your guys' opinion on this because I've had a lot of pushback and I just feel like if uh, I'm wrong or right, I would like to know. And I welcome your comments. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching my video, and please consider joining the Maverick Rebellion today. Together, my subscribers are more than just people. We are Mavericks who desire to change the gaming stereotypes and bring a better sense of community to YouTube. Individually, we can accomplish so much, but united, we can change how the world views gaming. Please consider joining our cause and subscribe today, and you'll be part of something bigger. You'll be part of an army and part of a rebellion against injustice. Mavericks unite. I am Proto Mario and I approve this message.